Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to EV Buyer's Guide. Up here in the Northwest, things are starting to get real chilly, but in the world of electric vehicles, it's never been hotter. That's because this week is the Tokyo Mobility Show. Now, unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts as well as time zone differences, I'm filming this before the Tokyo Mobility Show actually takes place. That said, there's been so much going on, and more, I suspect, that if you're interested in an overall coverage of the show, let me know down in the comment section below and I might be able to do a Tokyo Mobility Show recap and post it later this week. With that out of the way, there's plenty of news and it's time to get you plugged in. We'll start this week with Nissan at the Tokyo Mobility Show and it's finally happened. They've released number five of their concepts and this one is the Hyperforce. Now, for those of you familiar with Nissan, this sharp-edged all-electric model is going to look a lot like a Nissan GTR, but this one comes with one megawatt of power. If you had a blank slate and a blank check, what would you do with it? Well, Nissan engineers say electric GTR and make it real fast. It's certainly been a fun thought exercise, but I'm looking forward to the next press release from Nissan being more about its next production model and not so much a concept. While this next piece isn't an official announcement, Nissan's Vice President of Global Design was interviewed talking about the future of Nissan design, what's here, and what's coming. In the interview, he mentioned that the V-Motion motif, which is currently what you find on most Nissan front ends, is going to be making some changes. Whether Nissan looks to make some slight changes to the design or go a completely different direction, we can already see in vehicles like the Nissan Aria that the front end design is not necessarily built for an electric future, and this is where Nissan is going. I happen to be an overall fan of the Nissan Aria's design, including the front end, so hopefully the direction Nissan chooses to move from here is a positive one and built on an already solid foundation. Nissan's luxury brand Infiniti is also pushing towards electrification, and they showed off their Vision QE concept. Now this particular concept didn't come with a lot of specifications like we're going to find with a lot of these concepts and which I'll cover further in the Tokyo Mobility video. But the information did state that this is a sedan and instead of being a typical sedan shape this one's a bit more of a fastback. As far as size goes I expect this to be on the larger side of things but it's still going to be a while before we hear more. This is because Infinity is pushing for 2030 to be the year they have an all new electric lineup which tells me that this is still going to be a ways from production. Four new models isn't enormous, but it really depends on the manufacturer. And since Infiniti doesn't make a ton of vehicles as is, I think that rollout's going to be a little slower than we'd find in something like a Ford. Either way, I love to see companies trying, and if they put forward a compelling, enticing, and attractive electric vehicle, I'm here for it. In a world of growing EV popularity, there also comes the need for charging stations. And this is where the company EV Box is stepping in, saying they have a new solution. EV Box is an Amsterdam-based company that's putting out what they're calling a modular DC charging system. These units start with a charging capability of 90 kilowatts, but that can be increased up to 240 with 30 kilowatt modules that are stacked inside the cabinet. EV Box says this adds flexibility for consumers, as the owners of these stations can start with 90 kilowatts and increase or decrease as they see fit based on the needs of their customers. Now, likely to nobody's surprise, this EV Box unit is not a CHAdeMO based system and is instead CCS. And while CCS is the current standard, they did say they'll have NACS connectors down the road, but they didn't mention if that was going to be in this Tronic modular system or if it was going to be in some of their other offerings. I suspect we'll see NACS available here, and I'll be curious to see how many people are interested in this modular design, but it is nice to know that there are options. This week, the UAW and Ford announced that they've reached a tentative agreement and those UAW union members are going back to work immediately. A lot has yet to be released on the agreement, but the UAW says that they've secured a 25% increase for all UAW members, as well as a cost of living adjustment, which they've previously been unable to get. While all of this is good news for Ford, there's better news for people who want to buy a Ford, especially the Mustang Mach-E. A few weeks ago, Ford included a discount on the Mach-E for up to $3,000, and this week they announced that there's more cash on the hood. From now through January 2nd, depending on the model you're looking at, you can get up to $6,250 off your Mustang Mach-E. Now, $6,250 applies to the GT model, while the Select is going to be down at $1,250, but savings is still savings. It's getting towards year-end, and it's likely that more discounts will be coming as manufacturers look to move 2023 models off the line and get 2024 in the dealership. For models we won't see in 2024, but hopefully sooner than later, 
we'll turn to Honda and the new Prelude concept. This is another concept that's been released without a lot of information, but what we do know is that it seems to be a front wheel drive based electrified vehicle. Now in this case, electrified seems to not mean battery electric, but hybrid. It remains to be seen if this hybrid comes with a plug, but this model looks a lot closer to production than a lot of the other concepts that we've seen and have yet to see from the Tokyo Mobility Show. This coupe seems to have drawn a crowd and the Honda CEO said keep high expectations, so we will. On a more pragmatic note, Honda also introduced us to the Sustaina C, which as you might assume, is built with sustainable materials. The Sustaina C on display was built with an acrylic resin that can both be recycled and reused. In a world with limited resources, it's nice to see some manufacturers exploring the what if, but again, I don't think we'll be seeing this anytime soon. The biggest real world news for Honda this week is that they will no longer be partnering with General Motors for their future electric vehicles. Now this comes mere weeks after Honda announced the Prologue and we had a chance to go look at it in studio, but it says the Prologue will move forward, but future plans are still being considered. While this may be a blow for General Motors, I'm mostly curious to see what Honda plans to do next. Will they find a new partner? Do they have plans of their own? Either way, we'll be here, and as soon as we hear more, we'll fill you in. When it comes to GM's current electric vehicles, they're still working through some kinks. In this case, I'm specifically referencing the 2020 to 2022 Chevy Bolts that have yet to receive a battery pack. After the fiasco that these Bolt battery replacements have been so far, and after General Motors says we will not be replacing battery packs from 2020 up, it seems that they're responding to the class action lawsuit that's currently been filed. For current owners, they're able to bring their vehicle into the dealership, get software installed, that will monitor the battery pack at a maximum of 80% for about 6,200 miles. During this 6,200 mile interval, General Motors is convinced that the software will be able to detect if there are any serious issues with that battery pack and if it does in fact need replacing. Now along with the software fix comes a $1,400 incentive to do so. It is worth noting that over that 6,200 miles, you will be limited to 80% charge capacity and for some owners, that's just not good enough. GM says that if the class action lawsuit does go forward and is successful, if the amount is over $1,400, those who decide to do the software solution right now will be made whole on the difference. For Bolt owners, it's a tough position to be in, and I'm sure a lot of them would rather this just be done with. However, the saga continues, and we'll see what happens next. Unfortunately, what we do know is that General Motors is pushing back further the electric vehicle production plan for this year. Currently, it's expected that this pushback will affect the Equinox, Silverado, and Sierra EVs. While there are a number of factors listed by GM CEO Mary Barra as to the reasoning behind this delay, it's still disappointing to see that we are not going to get more electric vehicles from General Motors. Now, it's not like the electric vehicle production has been canceled altogether, but hopefully the delays all end up being worth it, as we've seen nothing but pushback on the electric car rollout from General Motors. The Chevy electric model we do have on the ground is the Blazer EV. Now it's not many, with only 19 vehicles being delivered in quarter three, but 19 is more than zero. The gasoline Blazer is a known quantity in its segment, but so far it doesn't appear the most competitive with its EV counterparts. The Blazer was announced with a 1LT trim, but that was shortly dropped for a 2LT base price. With the top end RS model starting just under $62,000, this is a lot to ask for a mid-sized crossover Chevrolet. 2023 is not looking like the best year for General Motors electric vehicles, but hopefully they can pick up the pace and get some more good news to us in quarter four. There is some good news in the world of battery technology, and in this case it comes from QuantumScape. QuantumScape has been one of the leading names in solid state battery technology, and they've announced good news from initial testing. What's most exciting for me is that these are external tests showing positive and reliable data on the discharge cycles and storage capacity of these batteries. I think we've still got a ways to go before we see solid state batteries make it into production vehicles, and it's not the only technology being researched. Lexus is ready to make a step forward in the world of electric vehicles, and it says it'll do so within a couple years. The LFZC hatchback style four-door has made its debut, and it comes with some lofty goals. Along with being attractive, aerodynamic, and practical, Lexus says this will also come with twice the range of a conventional battery electric vehicle. It's hard to say what the range of a conventional battery electric vehicle is since there are currently offerings between about 100 and 400 miles on the market, but suffice to say, if it's gonna be twice as much, this should probably be class leading when its expected release is 2026. What I don't expect to be class leading is its price, at least in the affordability category. 
If this car does everything Lexus says it will, you'll likely pay a pretty penny, but the good news is you'll get quite a bit for it. Toyota has historically been slow on the adoption of electric vehicles, but now they say that the electric car should also come with EV charging and energy management. Toyota's executive vice president said, if we sell a battery EV, a charging system is required. While the statement makes sense, there are already a significant number of third-party home charging solutions available, and none of these are specifically tied to a vehicle. With Toyota recently announcing they would be adopting NACS in 2025 and moving forward, I'd prefer they focus their efforts on production of electric vehicles and not infrastructure that already exists. I mentioned last week that the Buyer's Guide team is pro minivan, and boy has Mitsubishi put out a doozy of a concept. This is called the Mitsubishi DX, and it is a 2 plus 2 plus 2 all-wheel drive, go-anywhere, do-anything van. In my opinion, there's a lot to love with this machine, but one of my favorite things is also the most interesting, which is that they announced it would be a plug-in hybrid. Now, I don't expect that North America would see the Mitsubishi DX anytime soon, but if it were available, and we still had our Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid like we do for the long-term test vehicle, you can bet we would trade it in with very little hesitation. For those who are interested in electrified vehicles for sustainability reasons, you'll be glad to hear that Stellantis is partnering with a recycling company to make sure that the end-of-life batteries that come out of their vehicles have a place to go. This partnership is with a company called Arano, and it's a significant portion of Stellantis' effort to be completely carbon neutral by 2038. With the effective lifespan of liquid-cooled batteries being effectively decades, it's not something that needs to happen right away, but it's important to consider this chain down the line. In 20 to 30 years, there are going to be a significant number of battery packs that either need to be repurposed or recycled, and it's good to know that somebody's looking ahead. When it comes to looking ahead, we didn't need a crystal ball to see that the EX30 is going to be a popular vehicle. Volvo announced they would be adding EX30 production to another factory, this time in Belgium, starting in 2025. If the EX30 ends up being as affordable, practical, and fun to drive as everyone thinks it will be, then I don't think they'll be able to make enough no matter how many they put into production. For the first time ever, Tesla is selling its supercharger hardware to an outside company, and that company is none other than BP. What makes this deal such a first of its kind is that BP is purchasing $100 million worth of Tesla superchargers. It's unknown how many superchargers $100 million will buy you, but BP will now have their own branded supercharger stations that come with Magic Docs. One of the first states to receive these BP superchargers is going to be Texas, which is fitting since Texas is not only home of the Gigafactory, but also a state that just added Tesla Model 3, Model Y, and Model S to its incentive plan. Tesla currently has a $2,500 rebate program for up to 2,000 individuals, where previously those three models were excluded. I can't say this will significantly move the needle in Tesla sales for Texas, but if you're looking at a Tesla, you live in Texas, now's as good a time as any to go get one. The only caveat to that is that if you don't mind waiting, there may be a sport model on the way. Tesla software detectives are at it again, and this time they found the word sport built into the software. Along with sport being mentioned, there are some new images that show significantly increased bolstering on the front seats. This seems to be all we have to go on now, and this does apply only to the Highland models, which we have yet to see announced for the United States. That said, Alex and I were having this exact conversation just a few weeks ago, and hopefully you can see that in our upcoming video on the Tesla Model Y versus the Tesla Model 3. But we definitely think there's a market ready for a higher performance performance Model 3. This model not just being faster in a straight line, but with an interior that feels different, with different tires, different suspension. So we'll see what ends up happening. And finally, one thing we know won't be happening is the revival of the BMW i3. In a recent conversation with BMW executives, it came out that there is a focus on getting a small or subcompact electric vehicle back out in the market. This vehicle would be based on their Neue Klasse or New Class design language and would bear no similarity to the BMW i3. It seems that quirky little design was a bit too polarizing for most, but count me on the side of loving that funky little hot hatch. That's it for the news this week. If you want more coverage on the Japan Mobility Show, let me know down in the comment section below. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, if there are things that I missed, if there's stuff you want to know more about, you know where to find us, down in the comment section below, Facebook, Instagram, X, all those other social media places. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.